Good morning, everybody. Here I am in far northern California. This is Nina Gibbs, CEO and founder of Swim Foundations. And I am off site today for our video because I had a, a small business advising meeting this morning um, talking about labor law and all sorts of issues and things that businesses need to be prepared for with changes in legislation for 2019, specifically within the state of California and federally. So, <clears throat> Um, that aside, I am ready to start talking about our topic for this week, which is small, sw uh, small group swim lessons versus one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, we're going to see about getting Alice on here in just a few minutes, but we really want to touch on this because I know we get this question a lot uh, from parents and grandparents who maybe have had an experience at another program where the small group setting didn't quite work for them or if they're coming into swim lessons for the first time and they have this idea that the one-on-one -on -one private time between the instructor and their child is going to be the most beneficial. And we're here to convince them otherwise. So we will give it a second and see if we can get Alice on here and then we'll dive into our topic. And um, I will mention, I last week's talk was all about fun, uh, what fun means to us in swim lessons. And we covered, gosh, a lot how to have a happy swimmer. Um, but I did want to remind any of you watching who run swim schools or manage swim programs or are swim instructors, I would love to hear from you about what fun looks like in your lesson. So keep that in mind if you want to chime in. So good, good morning, morning Alice. How are you doing? In. Good morning, Alice. How are you doing? Yay. I'm always so relieved when it actually works. <laughs> I know. I know. And you're, Seriously. And, and you're, I've got an echo. I can I've hear myself echo, echo but we're gonna echo, but we're gonna we're gonna go through with the we're echo. We're gonna go through with the echo. Do I have an echo? Nope, you don't have an echo. Nope, you don't have an echo. You sound perfect to me. Okay, then we're gonna keep going. Okay, then I we're talk keep and going. I hear myself. I talk and I hear myself, myself from your phone. Let's dive in. I just, um, I already did a little introduction. Um, I already did a little Thanks introduction. again for being able to come Thanks right out of the pool into the car into our right top. I'm also remote today. I've got a pool behind us, which gives us a little setting. <laughs> instead of looking at my setting. bedroom. I love, instead of looking at my bedroom. Messiness. You look great. Yeah, you got the red lion? I'm at the red lion. I'm at yeah. the red lion. I had a business awesome. meeting this morning. Business meeting this morning. So, okay, great. Um, so, I want to spend um, maybe, maybe about you know eight to ten minutes, minutes today talking about a really specific subject that I know will that help, I know will swim help instructors like swim myself, like my small self, swim school small managers, swim school managers, and perhaps even and perhaps um, even larger um, parents, swim school managers, swim school managers. Talk to parents. Talk, talk to, to grandparents. Talk to grandparents about about what the benefits are. What the benefits are working. Or working, having your student learn in a small group setting environment versus a one-on-one. -on -one versus a one-on-one. -on -one and I'll, I'll just say one more thing before I open it up so you have some notes to share. Um, um, a lot of times these questions times about, these questions well, about, I think my child well, might do better in the one-on-one -on -one private setting. Do you offer that? Do you offer come that? from a Come new parent or new grandparent who are new to swimming lessons, but maybe they've had learning but maybe experience with their children in another setting, piano, piano, um, piano, music, um, dance, music, and they've seen, dance, their, you know, and they've how seen their, their child learns their, best. You know, how their child learns best. But also coming but also from, coming from um, parents, and parents and grandparents who might have had their children in swim lessons in, in in other programs other where programs, the swim group where setting didn't seem to work so well. Seem to work so well. And in my right. opinion, because my the teachers opinion, because were, the not teachers were not trained, highly trained, professional, and, and, professional um, and adequate um, at running adequate an effective at small group. An effective small group. So, um, yes. I'll, I'll hand it over um, to you to kind of talk, start, the start the conversation about what the benefits are of the small group setting and all time. Okay. Thanks, Nina. Um, so, I'm going to just read some of my notes. The first says, uh, group can be more productive because of some of these factors that I'm in a list. Um, social setting for children can be more comfortable. Um, the group setting and a class structure environment can invoke an interest in the learn to swim process. It, um, you know, as humans, we're all interested in each other and certainly children are with um, new friends and new, uh, new peers. So good peer pressure, um, 
the social setting provides comfortability, good peer pressure. The group setting um, in invoking that interest raises the child's interest um, and keeps the child's interest um, during the group activities. The most important thing that look, when you're 20, 25 minutes into when you're 20, 25 minutes into the a one on one engaged engagement. So when you've got that engagement, so when you've got that, like you said, it engages them from the beginning and keeps them engaged down the road. It engages them from the beginning and keeps them engaged down the road. Yes. Um, and so I've got a couple more things to touch on that'll open up some dialogue for the conversation. Um, and that this is a really important one, that the group setting provides a clear sense to the child because of the class structure, because of the learning environment, it makes a more productive lesson. It's clear to them what's going on. Whereas sometimes with a private lesson, um, is it playtime? Is this my babysitter? Um, they can be very manipulative in a private lesson, whereas in a group session, it's class, it's a school, um, school or learning mentality. It just happens because of the way that you have to stay organized, the way that you have to distribute your time and energy and take turns. Because a lot of people think group that they're not going to get individual attention. Right. Um, right. That's not so. That's not so even in our, in the current swim school that I'm working with and for, um, or our backyard lessons. Um, I've always seen mom run huge uh, neighborhood backyard pool lessons. You know, we're 20 to 30 people coming in and out um, where we have time for group activity and then individual time and time for group and individual attention. Um, so making the lesson more productive, especially for preschool age children. Mm -hmm. um, and earlier and later, they, they really, it's just so nice. You can see them kind of feel important to be a part of something when they're in a group. Mm -hmm. um, so they're more inclined to feel comfortable. Um, here's another thing besides the making a more productive lesson mm -hmm. is that the workload is dispersed. The work, the workload and the discipline of the body lines and the head position, that is even more comfortable because think of kids who are on swim team or think of yourself if you go do a spin class or yoga. Um, if you're doing it by yourself, you can be like, whatever, I'm over this, Not I'm done. Not motivated. <laughs> Not work hard. Not work hard. Why do swimmers swim on a swim team? They have to work, they have a tremendous amount of exertion and exercise to do per practice, per lesson, per session. I remember. In a group setting, you're with, yeah, right? <laughs> you're with a team, you're with peers, you're with other people sharing your experience, which is not always, um, I don't know, I mean, it, it can be anything Easy. we wanted to say, but Easy. it's hard work, you know? And children can get, just like any of us, can get emotional when we're getting work done. So being able to provide some endurance lessons in a group where they're on the kickboard with the noodle under their arms and they're doing, you know, six laps of kicking and breathing, just stretching out, getting their face down and kicking. Woo, they're doing it with a group. They're getting the work done. Whereas in a private lesson, it you can you still get the work done, but the group lesson provides a perfect uh, scenario of work, rest, interest, and more work and rest and play and interest and visual aids, watching one another. Um, mm -hmm. My last note on this says, a good teacher provides development methods, makes corrections, and holds themselves accountable and the swimmer accountable for the value of the lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're Going doing a group or you're doing a, the instructor. absolutely. If you're doing a group, mm -hmm. great, rock and roll, get work done, have fun, um, enjoy yourself as an instructor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a private lesson, 
it's just a slower, it's, um, it's a different pace because you can't push them to the limit for 30 minutes when we're talking about the, uh, you know, age range of zero to two to five. I've right. done it before. I mean, you can, but parents are like, wow, uh, they're going to be really tired. You know, you really worked yeah. hard today. Yeah. And you're like, Maybe oh, I thought I was. Back tomorrow. Back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, those are the three things. So just to recap is that, you know, the group can be more productive um, because of the comfortability that a social setting provides, um, invoking interest, retaining interest, um, examples, camaraderie, and, um, you know, having others around to share the workload. Because besides the fun and besides the emotional value that we put into our lessons, like you've talked about with endurance, we get a lot of work done. Right. So, and that and that's wanna, that's what makes a stronger wanna, swimmer. I don't want to discount the one-on-one -on -one private, private lesson. So, so what do you have so to say about to when say a one-on-one -on -one private, one -on -one private appropriate. lesson is appropriate? Well, I like what you said the other day. Um, so, let me put that just back in your court. You had, uh, we were speaking over the phone and you said, it's perfect when... It's perfect when it's perfect you have a specific when, have a technique specific or skill you want to work on with a child. And that usually or isn't breakthrough. at the five-year-old level, level, but it can be level, or, a or a breakthrough. Right. Or a breakthrough. So they're really right. struggling so they're really with, struggling um, with um, the, the energy the possibly or the motion that's happening in a group setting. Some one-on-one time to break through this immersion or to break through learning the breath or to break through maybe fear of jumping off the side. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to stand there and wait two, two minutes for a child to build up their confidence to, to jump in. And I also don't in. want to force them force too them soon if they're not ready to not ready cause, to more cause more fear. So there mm -hmm. could so be there certain could points, points where one-on-one um, um, one private um, one instruction of that 30, 30 20 minutes, minutes is important. Is important. Now, our backyard lessons, our backyard lessons are about an are hour about long, an hour so long. I usually so am I able usually to find able time to find within time within our backyard lessons. Ro yeah, have rotate that five minute one on one instruction because there's a point where we are rotating. We're giving some children a break. Mm -hmm. We're giving some kids practice or endurance time. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the backyard setting, the way we work, we do usually build in time in our regular lessons for that. When you're yeah. at a club, a gym, a uh, swim school. It's likely the lessons are 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes even sometimes I've seen, and you don't really have the time to do that. I've been in that situation too, where maybe I yeah. have a young child who, you know what, they, they'll cry if I take them too far. So it really could work to have one private lesson. And I don't see eight private lessons. I see one or two sprinkled out here and there to supplement the small group setting lessons. Yep, absolutely. I completely agree. And... um you know, to be honest, the learn to swim process can be so simplified to get these children acclimated and ready to do more and prepare them developmentally to be independent and safe. It can be so simplified. Mm -hmm. I took a video last night. I jumped in. I was we hold lessons from 3.45 till 7.15 or 3.45 to 7.45 some nights for our after-school programming. So I was in and out of the water for the whole session last night. It was great. I had really good energy. I was getting kids passed on their levels. Um, I worked with children who were on station two where they have to learn how to float independently. And one of my instructors that we get along really well, she's a great girl, um, she looked kind of tired. And I said, Jenny, would you mind if I get in and help these kids um, and you take a video? So we switched up and these children have been on the station multiple times. Um, the one little girl was frightened. At first, she wouldn't get in. Um, just a skinny little beautiful Indian girl. Cold. <laughs> and um, long story short is that it took me a good... 15 to 20 minutes with, and it was just two children. So small group. Um, it took me a good 15 to 20 minutes of just, maybe we went under where you hold them nice and tight around the chest and support the head and get them under. 
Maybe I had her do it five times within that time frame. She was now, her face changed. She was ready for more. She was accepting of anything I, I uh, had her try. And when the children were done with their 30 minutes, the little boy wouldn't get out because now he's floating. Mm -hmm. right. it, took me, it took me 20 <laughs> minutes to get the kid to do it. That's it. Whereas some, yep. you know, then the little girl, she left and she did great. The little boy wouldn't get out. She brings her mom and comes back to the pool, to the steps. Can I get in? Can I do more? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't, That's what this we want. is That's not what rocket science. Uh -huh. I think across the board in USA Swimming or any of these um, foundations or programs, they need to simplify the process and get them under the water, whether they are face down or vertical. Mm -hmm. This is a topic we should talk about at some point because the Next whole time. world of learn to swim is very afraid of that word and they shouldn't mm -hmm. be. My, if we're really going to start digging in and presenting mom's ethics and her methods, it's vertical float. Yep. And the whole swim, the whole swim industry is like, oh, vertical, no, they'll drown. No, right. they won't. it's a comfortable place to start and it's where they can find their breath. So, um, okay, well that, we will touch on that next time then I'll make a note and I'm going to sign off because I'm about to run out of battery and I don't want to lose this video. Okay. So we're going to say a quick goodbye to everybody and we will be back soon. Thank you, Alice, and I will talk to you soon. Love ya. Bye. Bye.